Happy December and welcome to this month's Q&A. In this video, we're going to talk about data plans, French food, and my favorite holiday traditions here in the Bay Area. Welcome, welcome. And if you are new to this Q&A series, I answer questions about San Francisco once a month at the end of the month. Although maybe January, maybe February, I might go to twice a month, depending on how busy the upcoming tourist season is. And you can feel free to submit your questions for next month already in the comments down below or look for my community posts when I ask for submissions. Okay, sit back, relax, and let's chat. Our first question comes from Mindy. What is the weather like at the end of March? Should we pack shorts or pants? Coming from a girl from Arizona. Thanks for the question, Mindy, and I am so looking forward to your trip out here. Unfortunately, it is still cold then, so pack up those long pants and sweaters. Also, it's the tail end of rainy season through April, so prep for showers just in case. My next question comes from Benjamin. For a foreigner, what is the best phone plan for one month? especially for using data. And how, where can we get it? What about Skype, WhatsApp, etc.? Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin, for the question. Well, we are at the tech epicenter of the US, so everything is pretty wired up. Most hotels, restaurants, and retail have some form of free Wi-Fi, but they are notoriously prone to hacking. So just make sure that you've pre-downloaded a reliable VPN app to secure to anything sensitive. Also, many will ask for an email in exchange for the free service. So come equipped with a burner email that you're willing to give up. Also, Google is partnering with the city of San Francisco to offer free Wi-Fi in most public places, but I find coverage there to be spotty at best. For better service, arrange for a mobile data package. Personally, I find that the best and cheapest is to get an international plan through your mobile carrier but you can also get a prepaid SIM card or visitor plan, generally 30 days when you land here via one of the major carriers, which include AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, and T-Mobile. AT&T is the biggest carrier out here and has the best coverage, but I find that T-Mobile has the most flexible and aggressively priced plans. Just do your online research first and you can purchase it when you get here at one of the carrier's brick and mortar stores and they'll also get you set up. Many of the big box retailers like Walmart, Target, and Best Buy also sell these prepaid plans. SFO International Terminal does have a phone rental store called TripTel where you can get SIM cards, rental phones, and rental pocket Wi-Fi devices. While it's super convenient because you can just pick up and drop off your rental equipment as you get on and off your airplane, you're probably paying through the nose for it. And yes, you could definitely use Skype, WhatsApp, Line, WeChat here in San Francisco, no problems. But you do need to have a data connection first, whether that's via Wi-Fi or cell. Benjamin also asks, as a French citizen, could you do a video on French places, restaurants, cafes, bistros, shops, etc., in the future? That would be awesome. Yes, it would be awesome. And I will do one in the future, but for now, I'm going to give you some recommendations on this video. Benjamin, il y a une grande communauté d'experts français dans la Bay Area. And many of them originally came over for software jobs here in the tech industry. So I asked a couple of my friends in the French community, what are their favorite places and where do they frequent? And here are their answers. For a fancy sit down meal, try La Folie in Russian Hill. Or if you want something that's a little bit more modern and French inspired, try the new Nightbird in Hayes Valley, which my friend says is an amazing restaurant. And many of the patrons online have given it thumbs up for its immaculate plating. Some great bistros include Café de la Presse near Union Square, Le Petit Laurent in Glen Park, and of course, a longtime favorite, Absinthe, which is also my personal favorite. L'Artoise near Castro has also got decent food, and my other friend recommended getting their beef filet. Also new in Union Square is 165, a massive six-story, 25,000 square foot French eatery with a bistro, patisserie, wine bar, and fine dining. 
It's kind of like Italy in New York or the China Live here in Chinatown. I actually didn't even know about this place until my friend told me about it, but looking on Yelp, it's got fantastic reviews. So I definitely need to go down there and check it out for a video. The next question comes from trade shows in China. Where can I see nature landscapes, animals, and plants? Hmm, I guess it depends on how natural you wanna get. To really see nature in its natural setting, you've got to get out of the city. Either head down south to Monterey Bay, where you can see a lot of sea mammals like sea otters, whales, seals, sea lions, pelicans, things like that, or head up north to Muir Woods or Point Reyes. I'll actually include a link above to my video on Muir Woods if you wanna check that out. If you wanna see nature in a more tame setting, the best gardens can be found at Golden Gate Park. And here's a link to my series on the Golden Gate Park so you can see what it has to offer. I recommend the walking loop around Stowe Lake, the Japanese tea gardens, and also the bison paddock, which is always very interesting. And then there's the San Francisco Zoo, the Academy of Sciences, and the Aquarium by the Bay, which are great for viewing animals and other wildlife. And while you are at the Aquarium by the Bay, which is located at Pier 39 in Fisherman's Wharf, the top number one most popular thing for people to do, people love the sea lions, which uh, sun themselves off the deck right next to Pier 39. So don't forget to catch that. Chen Lan is planning to come out on a trip next month and asks, we plan to buy city pass for three days because we don't drive. Do you think it's worth it? Does it take a long time to wait for public transportation to get from one place to another? Thanks for the question, Chun Lan. A lot of people ask me about this and actually I addressed it in my budget video up here. So go there to look for a little bit more detail, but in short, city passes negotiated discount admissions with a set number of attractions. And if all the attractions that you wanna see fall under the city pass, Absolutely, it's a good deal. But if not, it may not be worthwhile for you. So go down the list and do the math. And also don't forget to take into account that a lot of these attractions also offer discounted admission elsewhere. So make sure you calculate that into. In terms of public transportation, it really depends on where you wanna go. In high traffic areas, they have buses and trains that come quite frequently. So that's generally not a problem. What will take a little bit of time is if you're traveling from the Southern neighborhoods in San Francisco up North to say the Golden Gate Bridge. So let me give you a couple of times so that you can get an estimate. From Union Square to Golden Gate Bridge is approximately 40 minutes on public transportation. And if you're trying to get from Mission District up to Golden Gate Bridge, it's probably about an hour. And our final question in the spirit of this festive season comes from Carmen. Carmen asks, what are my fave places to go during the holidays here in the Bay Area? Carmen, nothing beats Union Square during the holidays. Everything is decked out to the nines. And even if you don't buy anything, just go to window browse. Usually I start out in Westfield Mall to see the inverted Christmas tree. And then I make my way over to Union Square where they have a giant Christmas tree in the plaza as well as ice skating. And in years past, they've also had Hanukkah menorahs. Then I break for lunch at the Rotunda at Neiman Marcus where you're seated right below the glass atrium roof. And you can look down on the beautiful Christmas tree, which is poking up right next to the balcony where you're eating. Then on to more shopping. I used to make an annual trek to Gump's every year to do Christmas ornament shopping until they closed down last year. But luckily this year, they've got a pop-up store going for the holidays, which should be open through January. So make sure you hit that up before they close. Then I breeze through the lobbies of the major hotels just to check out the decor. Don't miss the Weston St. Francis castles, the giant full-size gingerbreads at the Fairmont, and the big toy soldiers out front of the Intercontinental. A fun, very uniquely Bay Area activity is the Caltrain Holiday Train, where they deck out one of their trains and have carolers and Mr. and Mrs. Claus on board. The train travels northbound starting in Santa Clara, making limited stops and finally ends up in San Francisco. Unfortunately, you've already missed it for this year as they usually host it at the beginning of December. So this year it was December 7th and 8th, but catch it next year. Finally, some Bay Area residents go all out with their outdoor Christmas decorations. So definitely take one night to drive around and enjoy the lights. Here in San Francisco, the most popular house for this is the Tom and Jerry house at 3650 21st Street. On the peninsula, try Eucalyptus Street 
in San Carlos between Orange and Tamarack, and in the East Bay, try Piccadilly Drive in East Oakland between Seminary and 55th. And on that note, have a wonderful holiday season, whether you're celebrating Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa. Here's a little bit of holiday cheer from San Francisco. See you in the new year. by hitting that red subscribe button down below or like the video by hitting the thumbs up icon. Thanks so much.